the Lord. God bless everyone. How are you doing? It is well with you. God bless you. God bless you. That's one of my favorite worship. I surrender all to you. Everything I have, I give to you. We told in nothing. Hallelujah. God bless you. So I was just live not too long ago and a lot of you were watching and I think I mentioned that my, I may come back on. For some reason, since I woke up, I've been so excited. And whenever I feel like this, I know God is just about to do something, something great. How is everyone feeling? I know some of you can't even catch up or keep up with me. How many of you are able to keep up with me? If you're able to keep up with me, Type me. If you're, able, if you're not able to type, not me. <laughs> Some of you are not able to keep up with me. My God. You're wondering, what kind of woman is this? Don't you get tired? I was on yesterday morning for almost 10 hours. Went to sleep for 5, 6 hours. Woke up. Came back on for almost 3 hours. Went to eat. Now I'm back on. It's like, woman of God, give us a break. <laughs> We want to go, please give us a break. We need to do other things. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this one, please give us a break now. Are we going to do everything only here? No, we have to do other things. But the good thing about this ministry is you're able to do other things and still listen to me, right? Some of you are probably in bed just listening before you sleep off. Some of you are in the kitchen cooking, but you have me on. Some of you are doing some chores and you're still listening. So it's like I'm your daily radio or it's good. It's God. Having enough of God in your system, right? Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just laughing. But the funny thing is no matter how I come online, you know, no matter how I come online, there are still people that look for me when I'm offline. They'll be on my page looking to see if I'm on. It's like it's so addictive. They can't stop listening or watching because God is here. Hallelujah. So let me, get, tell, me, let me tell you guys what happened. When I finished the other video I just did, saying God will make a way, preached about the Israelites, how um, God opened a way for them to cross the Red Sea. And I had shown you about a guy that God made a way for him, right, from this ministry preaching that powerful message and I said let me go eat my mom had made me some food some snails you know I had dreamt that an angel was trying to get me some snail I like snail I don't know if some of you know what snail is but 
So I told my mom a few days ago, and I didn't know she was going to buy it for me. She had to make it for me. So after, after doing that, I came to eat it. And everybody had gone to sleep. Only my mom was downstairs. I was like, what? Today that I'm feeling so energized, feeling so fired up. Everybody is going to sleep. Now I'll be the only one down here. Because I slept during the daytime. I slept during the daytime. So for that reason, they've all left me. They all left me to go sleep. So my mom said, well, she's going to stay up a little bit with me. So after eating, my mom decided to go up. I kept telling her, I said, I don't know what's happening. I'm just so happy. I don't know. I'm just so excited. I'm so happy. I don't know what's going on, you know. The same way I was feeling with you guys online. Same way I was feeling with you guys online. So when she was going up, I said, you know what? When you go up, I actually wanted to go to the studio. <laughs> but it's just, it's, it's late. It's like almost 3 o'clock or 2 something. So I messaged all my workers to see if anybody was awake so I could just go, even if they just opened the door for me and leave me there because I wanted to come online and invite some people on. That's how excited I was. I needed to go to the studio, you know, but all of them were sleeping. Nobody responded. I said, okay, that's fine. So when my mom was going up, I said, I'm just going to walk around here in the living room and talk to God because I, I feel so energized. Even though I ate, I didn't feel like I ate. I felt so energized. So I felt so good. I don't know. So when my mom went upstairs, I decided to walk in the living room, just walking back and forth from the door to the wall. And I was just walking. At first, I wasn't saying anything. I was just walking like quietly. I was actually watching the video I did, and when I got to like a few minutes of it, I decided to get up and walk, walking back and forth, and then I now said, Father, talk to me. Father, I want you to talk to me. Let's just talk. Everybody's sleeping. It's just me and you. I'm telling you guys, I like to tell you guys details of things, because this is like, um, I'm, I'm teaching you things based on my lifestyle, how I live with God. So that way, some of you may have had moments like this, or maybe it will give you ideas on how to communicate with God. I don't know, but I like to share these moments with you guys. So while I was walking, I said, Father, let's talk. It's just me and you. Everybody's sleeping now. And I'm just so excited. I don't know what's going on, but I just want to talk to you. Right? So while I was walking and saying that, and I suddenly, um, I said, you know what, Father? I want to see you. I, w I just want to see you, you know, like <laughs> just show yourself or something. I Show me something. I want to see you. And then suddenly God started to talk to me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> God started to talk to me. And God said, but I am in you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> he said, I am in you. I said, I am in you. I am, he said, I am in you. Somebody type this. I am in you. I am in you. <laughs> I am in you. I want somebody to type this. I am in you. God told me, he said, but I am in you, meaning you want to see me, but I'm in you. Like I live in you. That's what he's trying to say. <laughs> He said, I am in you. Like I heard it so clearly. I was like, wow. So he started thinking, flashing me back to sometimes that when I'm thinking something, I'm thinking I'm the one thinking it, not knowing is God thinking it or is God telling me, you know what I mean? So he started giving me a whole lot of scriptures. He started giving me a whole, like I, this thing I'm telling you, I was walking back and forth. He said, he said, but I am in you. Like, you want to see me, but I'm in you. Why do you want to see me when I'm in you? <laughs> so meaning, if you see me, Princess Belemzi, you see God. Hey, my God. So when you see me, you see Jesus. When you see me, you see God. So you, in fact, you know what? Somebody need to personalize it. Tell yourself, God is in me. God is in me. Put your own name. God is in me. Put your name. Yes. 
you you keep looking for God everywhere. Father, I know I want you to show me. I want you to know. He say why, but I'm in you. <laughs> Meaning when they see you, they see Jesus. <laughs> when they see you, they see God. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, my God. I have to come online to share this with you guys. This is my moment with God, but I was too excited and they're all sleeping because I slept during the daytime. And I say, Father, let's just talk, you know? And he said, because I was like, just show me. I want to see something. Just show me something. He said, why? But I'm in you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> God is in you. <laughs> Stop looking for God everywhere. <laughs> God is in you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> My God. <laughs> God is in you. Stop looking for him to show himself to do this. You already carry God on the inside. He lives in you. That's right. He has made his home in you. Yes, and let me prove that to you. I have a bunch of scriptures that God was giving me, right? You know this scripture that you guys are always quoting? First John chapter 4, verse 4. The one that says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you, not around you, not beside you, not outside of you. That is in you. He is in you. He lives in you. Then he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you. You carry God's spirit. You carry God on the inside. Stop looking for God everywhere. When God lives inside of you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Right? Than he that is in the world. That's right. Now, the New Living Translation, it says, but you belong to God. My dear children, you have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. The spirit who lives in you. This is a different translation. You understand? The spirit in you. Which spirit is that? God's spirit. Because God is a spirit. Yes. God is a spirit. And his spirit is in you. Right? Uh huh. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? God is a spirit. So the spirit in you is greater than the spirit that is in the world, right? If you read John chapter 4, verse 24, it says, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, right? So God is a spirit. And this scripture is saying that the spirit that is in you, that lives in you. Is it? You have already won a victory over these people because the spirit who lives in you. We're talking about God is a spirit and now we're saying the spirit who lives in you. God's spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the wall. So you carry God's spirit on the inside. God is in you. Stop looking for God everywhere. When you carry him inside you. My God. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh my God. My God. My God. I say, wow, Father. He say, yeah, why are you, why are you looking for me to show? When I live inside of you, I'm in you. <laughs> if you read Galatians 2.20, let me read it in um, the King James Version. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. 
Christ liveth in me. Jesus lives in me. Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Let me let me read that in another um, translation. The New Living Translation. It says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Jesus lives in me. In you, in you, in you, in you. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Wow, so Christ lives in me. God lives in me. So you mean I carry God on the inside? Wow, so why am I living in fear? Why am I so doubtful? Why am I so fearful? Why do I worry a lot? I shouldn't be worrying a lot because Christ lives in me. God is in me. Hey, my God. Do you know that even as you are listening to this message, you who are in Christ, God is in you right now. You don't even need God to show any sign that he's in your room or because he's actually in you. You are the carrier of God's presence. You are the container that God's spirit is dwelling in. So you carry power. Anyone that sees you, all they see is power. All they see is God. <laughs> oh my God. Everybody type this. Christ lives in me. Jesus Christ lives in me. Yes, I am a carrier of God's presence. I am a carrier of God's spirit. Yes, if they are looking at you, they think you are just Belema. No, 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 no. You carry God on your inside. That's why you are not afraid of the enemy. You are not afraid of anyone. <laughs> you are indestructible. You are unkillable. You are untouchable. Hey, because anyone that wants to mess with you is trying to mess with God. <laughs> anyone that tries to mess with you is actually trying to mess with God. Because you carry God on your inside. Anywhere you go, God is with you because God actually lives inside of you. You are the container that carries his spirit. You cannot, sickness cannot live in your body because God lives in you. Pain cannot stay in this body because God lives in me. <laughs> I say sickness cannot stay in your body because God lives in you. Pain cannot stay in this body because God lives in you. And God is powerful. So that sickness, unless you don't know the kind of power that you carry on the inside, then you will be there suffering from pain and all that. But once you recognize that you carry the spirit of God, the power of God, the presence of God, Jesus is in you. Once you recognize this, I am telling you, you will be able to command this sickness to leave. That there is no room for it. You will be able to command this pain to leave your body right now. Because there is no room for it. Because Jesus has already occupied your body. The spirit of God has occupied your body. God himself has made his home in your body so there's no room for sickness that's right i'm still reading some more scriptures john chapter 14 let's read verse um yeah let's read verse 23 jesus replied all who love me will do what i say my father will love them and we will come and make our home with each of them. If you love him, you will do what he said. Meaning, if you love him, you will keep his words. And his father will love you too. And him and his father, they will come unto you 
and they will make your home with their home with you. Yeah, they will come and live with you in you. But you have to love him and obey him and him and his father will come and live in you. Your body will become their home. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. They will move in and come and leave with you. So you're going to carry them inside of you. You understand? <laughs> it said, Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My father will love them and we will come and make our home with each of them. So you have to love God. You have to obey God. And they are coming to move in with you. The message, the message translation say, um, it said, because a loveless word, say Jesus is a sightless word. If anyone loves me, he will carefully keep my word and my father will love them. We will move right into the neighborhood. <laughs> ah, they will make your body, their neighborhood to move into and you will all live together. You don't understand. You will all live together. Come and listen to the TPT translation. Oh my God. This is powerful. It says, Jesus replied, Loving me empowers you to obey my word. And my father will love you so deeply. That we will come to you and make you our dwelling place. Hey! My God, he said, we will come to you and we will make you our dwelling place. We will come to you and make you our dwelling place. This is the TPT translation, the passion translation. This is John chapter 14 verse 23. He said, Jesus replied, loving me empowers you to obey my word. And my father will love you so deeply that we, that means him and his father, we will come to you and we will make you our dwelling place. We will come and dwell in you. God says, why are you looking for me to show myself when I am in you? I live in you. Most of the decisions you make, I'm the one helping you make it. Most of the things you're thinking, I'm the one thinking it. Hey, I say Jesus Christ. So sometimes you are doing something you think is you thinking it. You don't know it's God in you thinking it. It's God in you telling you to do it. But you're thinking you are the one doing this thing. You're thinking you are the one that feel like doing this. No, no, no. Because God lives in you. So God is the one making you do it. God is the one making you say those words. God is the one making you do these things. But you think it's you. He said, we will come to you. And we will make you our dwelling place. I'm, this is all scriptural, guys. I was just having my moment with God. When everybody has slept. Because most times when they are all sleeping. It's quiet for me. I just be by myself down here. For hours. And before you know God will just tell me something. Oh my God. I'm so excited. I just want to share it with somebody. <laughs> oh I love this TPT translation. Somebody needs to post this. Because Jesus replied. He said. Loving me empowers you to obey my word. Once you begin to love God. And you begin to obey his commandments. Obey him. He said, Jesus said, him and his father, we will love, they will love you so deeply. The moment you love and obey God. And not only will they love you so deeply, they will come to you. And they will come and make you their dwelling place. They will come and live in you. They will be comfortable living in you because you love them. And you obey the commandments. You are living a holy life. And they feel comfortable in you. They will make you their dwelling place. So you carry God. 
You don't need to look for God everywhere because you yourself, you are a carrier of God's presence. You are a carrier of power. <laughs> the spirit that is in you <laughs> is greater <laughs> than the spirit that is in the world. He said the spirit that is in you, the spirit is in you. This is God's spirit that is in you. So how can you tell me you have the spirit of God in you, but you are running around everywhere looking for prophets to help you. You are running around everywhere looking like, I'm just saying. You are looking for help, but you have fire burning inside of you. <laughs> you have the Holy Ghost inside of you. You have Jesus in you. You have God in you, but you are busy begging somebody to pray for you. Don't you understand that God lives inside of you? Just talk to God. Or speak a word and it will come to pass. You carry power. Yes. You're walking in power. <laughs> Don't be too weak. See, the devil doesn't want you to recognize who you are. What you can, what you carry. Or, you know, he doesn't want you to know these things. So you're walking around thinking you are powerless. But when they look at you, the demons look at you, they are afraid of you. Because they're like, if only you know what is inside of you. If only you know what you carry inside. If only you know. If only you know. But you don't even know these things. But now I'm teaching you these things. God is in you. God is in you. The title that I put it is God is in me. God said, but I'm in you. <laughs> Why do you want to see me? But I'm in you. <laughs> hey, that thing just, when I heard that thing, eh, I was like, yes, yes. It's not like we don't know these things, but it's just so exciting when God says it. He said, why are you trying for me to show myself or show you? I'm in you right now. <laughs> you see, most of the things you do, I'm the one doing it. Most of the things you think, I'm the one thinking it. Most of the things you say, I'm the one saying it. And it's true with me. Most times, people that hang around me, even my cousin, Pastor Isaac, has said it. He said, whatever the woman of God says is prophecy. I could be laughing with you and I'm saying something and it's happening. Because I don't even know when I'm the one saying it. I don't even know when God is the one saying it. Even when I'm thinking things, I would think I'm the one thinking it. But it's God thinking it because God lives in me. So I'm teaching you this thing now. This thing, John 14. Let's read. Let's le read more. Thank you, Jesus. John 14. I'm going to start from verse 1. I want to read the New Living Translation. John 14 is one of my favorite in the book of John. It's very powerful, guys. I want you guys to kind of read it a lot. It says, Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. The King James Version is popular. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. But I'm going to read it in New Living Translation, right? He said, there is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? He said, if this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the, you know the way to where I am going. Now we don't know. No, we don't know, Lord. Thomas said, we have no idea where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you, if you had already known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. If you have already known me, you will know who my father is. Because from now on, 
you know my father and you have seen him. They're like, I'm sure they will be confused. Like, what do you mean? From now on, we know the father and we've seen him. You're always talking of the father. How are we? We've not seen the father. All we see is you. <laughs> hey, he said, he said, if you had already known me, you would know who my father is. Right? From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the father and we will be satisfied. Show us the father and we will not even ask you any more question about the father. That's all we need. Show us the father. Meaning show us God. You always talk about God. You're always talking about the father. Can you please show him to us? We want to see him. Woman of God. You are always talking about God. Show us God. How can we see God? When you show us God, then we will be okay. <laughs> Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip? And yet you still don't know who I am? Hey, I got no both. Yeah. <laughs> So you mean I have been with you all this time and you still don't know who I am? He said, anyone who has seen me has seen the father. Hey, Akababa. <laughs> so why are you asking me to show him to you? If you have seen me, you have seen my father. <laughs> Somebody needs to say this though. When they see me, they see Jesus. When they see me, they see my father. <laughs> my father is a spirit. Yeah. And right now, as you're seeing me, you're seeing him because his spirit is here, is blended in me, in this body that you are seeing. <laughs> because my father and I, we are one. <laughs> hey, God, God, God. <laughs> so when they see you, Eh? They see God. So why are you asking me to show you God? When you see me, you've already seen him. Because I carry his presence. I carry his spirit. He lives in me. And this is not just for me, the woman of God. You that is a believer. You that carry the spirit of God inside of you. You that Jesus lives in you. When they see you, they see God. When they see you, they see Jesus. So if they're asking you to show them God, you want the, well, you see, that's why you have to represent God well. You can't carry God's spirit and be full of wickedness. You can't carry God's spirit or God's presence and be hating people. You have to bear the fruits of the spirit. Because then you will be true representative of Jesus. Otherwise, you cannot tell somebody that when you see me, you see Jesus. No, I don't see Jesus when I see you. I see the, the devil because you're so wicked. And da, 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 da. You know what I mean? Do you understand what I'm saying? So when they see you, they see God. They see Jesus. And he was saying, he said, um, he said have I been with you all this time, Philip? And yet you still don't know who I am. Anyone who has seen me has seen the father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Just like I was asking God. I said, father, I want to see you. Show me something. He said, Belema, why? I live in you. <laughs> oh my God. When God is talking to you, it is so scriptural. I'm telling you. He said, but I live in you. You're asking to see me. You're asking for me to show you a sign that I'm here. But I'm actually in you. <laughs> right now, as you are seeing yourself, I am in you. <laughs> as you are looking in the mirror, you are looking at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in your eyes, when you look deeply, it is my eyes you are seeing. Hey, my God. Hey, hey, Rata, ya credible, say, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> look at the mirror, look, and you are seeing, you think you are seeing yourself. <laughs> he 
It is God you are looking at because God is in you. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Look in the mirror. Who do you see? If God lives in you, who are you, who are you really seeing in the mirror? Are you sure you're seeing yourself? Or are you seeing Jesus? Are you sure it's yourself you're looking at in the mirror? Or are you seeing Jesus in the mirror? I'm just saying because his spirit is in you. Meaning his spirit is blended in you. Yeah, when you're speaking in tongues. It is the spirit of God that is praying. Right? How do you know what you're even saying? How do you know how to do what you're doing? How do you know how to preach the message you are preaching? How do you know how to sing like this? Yes. Did you give yourself the anointing? No. It's God in you. He's the one that is doing all these things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He says, so why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak are not my own. I told you. <laughs> the words I speak are not my own. But my father who lives in me does his work through me. Ha! <laughs> Jesus Christ says, the words that I speak, they are not my own. But my father who lives in me, the words that you, you speak, you, 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 the words you are speaking, the, the preaching you are preaching, the prophesying you are prophesying, the things you are saying, they are not your own, but your father who lives in you, he is the one that is doing everything through you. There are some of you, even me now preaching every time, doing all this. Humanly speaking, this is impossible. I can't do this on my own. It is God in me. He is the one that is doing the work through me. Jesus has already answered it. He said, the words that I speak, they are not my own. But my Father who lives in me. My Father who lives in me. My father who lives in me. Your father who lives in you. He does his work through me. The other day God said that most times when I'm preaching or I'm speaking. You think it is Belema speaking. It is actually him speaking. It's just that sometimes he will say I am God. But there are many times he's not saying I am God. But he's the one speaking. But you would think it's the woman of God. That's why you have to be careful with me. Because you don't know when. I'm the one speaking. You don't know when it's God. The same way that Ananias and Sapphira, they were lying. They didn't know they were lying to the spirit of God. Hey, <laughs> And he, the, the disciples say, why did you choose to connive and, and lie, lie to the Holy Spirit? And they are wondering, Holy Spirit, is it not you we are looking at? When did we lie to Holy Spirit? We were talking to you. Why you got to bring Holy Spirit into this? Because the Holy Spirit lives in me. God's Spirit lives in me. So when you're lying to me, you're not even really lying to me. You're lying to God. Have you forgotten that scripture? Say, so why did you choose to lie to the Spirit of God? I'm sure the people will be confused. Spirit of God? What do you mean by that? Let me go back and read. Uh-huh. Acts chapter 5. From verse 1. But there was a certain man named Ananias. Who with his wife Sapphira sold some property. He bought part of the, he brought part of the money to the apostles. Claiming it was the full amount. With his wife's consent he kept the rest. Then Peter said Ananias. Why have you let Satan fill your, fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and you kept some of the money. For yourself, you lie to the Holy Spirit. What? Holy Spirit? I didn't see no Holy Spirit. I'm looking at you. 
So you are looking at Princess Belenzi, and I'm saying you lied to the Holy Spirit, and you are looking around the room, Holy Spirit, woman of God, is you I'm talking to. Why are you saying I lied to Holy Spirit? I don't see no Holy Spirit. I see you. Because the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. And how do you know I'm the one speaking right now? How do you know it's not the Holy Spirit speaking? <laughs> he said, then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit. And you kept some of the money for yourself. The property was yours to sell or not to sell as you wished. And after selling it, the money was also yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us, but to God. Hey, you were not lying to us. You are looking at us here, forgetting that God lives in us. You were lying to God. And this man will be confused. God, I'm looking at a few guys here and you're telling me I'm lying to God. Because God lives in them. He thought he was just having conversation with the apostles. But these are men that God has decided to leave in them. Jesus and God have made their home in their body. They, have, they are living in them. They have moved Move into their body because they love God and they obey God. They are doing what he wants. So now he lives in them. So when people come and lie to them, they think they are lying to them, but they are actually lying to God. Say so you weren't lying to us. But lying to God. So anyone that is even trying to, to tamper with you. Anyone that is even trying to destroy you. They are trying to destroy God. And they cannot destroy God. And that's what makes you unkillable. <laughs> that's what makes you untouchable. So when God says you are untouchable. It's because him God. He is untouchable. And he lives in you. So if they think they can kill you. They need to kill God first before they kill you. Which we all know that is impossible. So why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? When God tells you you are untouchable. He tells you you are unkillable. <laughs> he tells you you are unstoppable. Because he lives in you. So for them to stop you, they need to stop God. And they cannot stop God. Unless you, yourself, you stop yourself. say you weren't lying to us but to God as soon as Ananias heard these words he fell to the floor and died everyone who heard about it was terrified then some young men got up wrapped him in a sheet and took him out and buried him about three hours later his wife came in not knowing that what had happened Peter asked her was this the prize you and your husband received for your land? Yes, she replied. That was the prize. Listen, no, listen, listen. The wife came and she herself lied. And Peter said, how could the two of you even think of conspiring to test the spirit of the Lord like this? We are back to the spirit of the Lord. <laughs> He said, how could the two of you even think of conspiring to test the spirit of the Lord like this? He said, the young men who buried your husband are just outside the door. And they will carry you out too. Why did you lie to test the spirit of the Lord? So at that time, it is the... The spirit that is speaking through them. Because the spirit leaves in them. So why are you lie to take the spirit like this? So people need to be careful. If I be careful I'm among believers. When you are around believers. Not your servants of God. Anyone that carries God on the inside. Anyone that has God's spirit living in them. 
Be careful when you are around them. He said instantly she fell to the floor and died. When the young men came and saw that she was dead, they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear gripped the entire church and everyone else who heard what had happened. King James said, and great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as, a, as heard these things. And next time they will know not to lie to the disciples because they don't know if they are lying to God or to the man. <laughs> so when you come to the woman of God and you are saying all these things, woman of God that God lives in her and you are coming to lie, thinking that God will not fish you out, thinking that God would not know. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> when God lives in you, your discernment becomes even sharper than normal. Yes, you are able to discern. You are able to know all these things. I'm telling you because God's spirit is in you. Let's go back to John chapter 14. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, don't you believe, verse 10 says, don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The word that I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does this work through me. My Father lives in me. My Father is comfortable living in me because I'm always doing the things that please my Father. So my Father lives in me. He said, he's the one that does this work through me. I'm just the container. I'm just the body. But he's the one that is doing all these things. His spirit is the one doing all these things you see me doing. It's not me. It's my father. Just believe that I am in the father. And the father is in me. Or at least believe because of the works you have seen me do. Because ordinarily, I cannot do this work. But since the Father started to live in me, I'm able to do this work. Yeah, before when I was a party girl, I couldn't even do nothing. But now look at me. I'm able to pray. Things happen. And I'm able to do things. I'm able to preach. It has to be the Father that is doing this. The father that's living in me. Because before I couldn't do these things. So if you don't believe. At least believe for the works that you have seen me do. Believe for the sake of all these things. That you've seen me do. That's what Jesus was saying. He said just believe that I am in the father. And the father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. How else do you explain the work that I'm doing? It has to be the father in me that's doing it. Because on my own, I can't do this. Right? There are some of you, just for the sake of the things that you've been doing, that God is using you to do, that shows that God lives inside of you. Because you know deep down in your heart that there's no way you can do these things on your own. To anyone that does not believe that you carry God inside of you, that person must be sleeping or drunk. Because how would they explain the things that you are doing? That's what Jesus is saying. He said, even if you don't believe, at least believe because of the work that you have seen me do. How do you expect or how do you explain this work that you've seen me do? Who do you think is doing it? It's my father who lives in me. He's the one doing it. <laughs> When I touch you, when I put my hand on your head, I'm not the one touching you. It is my father who lives in me that is touching you. When I blow breeze on you, I'm not the one blowing breeze on you. It is God who's blowing the breeze on you. Hallelujah. I'm just the container. I am just the, the vessel that is carrying the spirit of God. Because my father needs a body to be able to do what he needs to do because he's a spirit. So I'm just the body. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh my God. 
And it says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the father. My God. Hallelujah. Now, if you continue reading, let's go to verse 15. He said, if you love me, obey my commandment and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. Right? He will never leave you. He said, he is a Holy Spirit who lives in, who, who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him. And doesn't recognize him. The world is not interested in God. They are not trying to surrender to God. They are not looking for God. And they won't even recognize God when they see God. They will say he's a demon, right? He said, but you know him. Because he lives with you now. And later he will be in you. The father lives with you now. But later, when I go away, the father will begin to be in you. The spirit of the father will be in you. For right now, he lives with you. <laughs> but very soon when I'm gone, he will begin to live in you. Meaning you will begin to carry him the way I carry him. So it's good for you that I go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. If I don't go, you will not be able to carry God's presence. If I don't go... You will not be able to tell somebody that the father is in you. How many of you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Are you understand what I'm saying? Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm so excited. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just so, I'm so excited. Let's look at John chapter 10. Verse 30. Thank you, Jesus. I love you so much. <laughs> hey. The Father and I are one. <laughs> the Father and I are one. The King James Version says, I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. <laughs> Easy translation says, My Father and I are a one person. And people did not understand that. When he was preaching and telling them these things. They were trying to stone him. The father and him are one. But now him, the father and you. We are you, Jesus, the father. All of you are now one. Because now they live in you. Right? So you are one with the Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> you that is in Christ. <laughs> you are one with the Father. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh Jesus, I'm so happy. Hmm. You know, it's always good to spend time with God. Because God is always speaking. God is always... um Speaking. Mm. Look at this scripture. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17. It said, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. The New Living Translation said, But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Becomes one spirit with him. He who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. So we are all one with God. We are blended as one. So when you see me coming, you see my father, you see Jesus. Stop saying I should show you Jesus or I should show you the father. When you see me, you see him. That's why I need to make sure I live right. My life should be an exemplary life. I shouldn't be preaching and saying, I carry Jesus in me and I'm doing some things that are so questionable. That's not a true character of Jesus, is it? Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of you, you still need some kind of work to do. Let me read this scripture. I want to read a scripture. Galatians 5. 
from verse 22. Galatians 5 from verse 22. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The fruits of the Spirit. He said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. We're talking about the Spirit of God. The Spirit of the Father. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy. Peace. Long suffering. Right? Joy. Peace. Long suffering. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness. Temperance. Against such there is no law. Right? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Nine of them. Do you exhibit or do you portray this fruit of the Spirit? Because if you don't, if you, if, if you, if you don't, right? If you don't, you can't really say you carry the presence of God. Mm. Mm. <laughs> See? Somebody just messaged me now. When I was preaching on the earlier message. The one where I say God will make a way. There was a guy that kept on posting that um, his message was, I don't know if you guys remember that message. He said, please help me. I'm so hopeless right now. I was dupe of 75000 It was supposed to be for my school fees. I thought it was wise to invest in an online business due to the COVID-19 lockdown. I'm so down right now. I'm having suicidal thoughts. I'm hopeless. Now, this person has sent it to my ministry page while I was preaching. And he didn't stop there. He came on my video and kept posting it. I deleted somebody. was still posted. And I was talking about God will make a way. And apparently, some of you kind of responded to him. Saying that this is a scam and all of that. I think he was thinking somebody will feel sorry for him. So when I was preaching, I said like some people, like somebody on here, claiming that they were duped or they were this, that. Instead of them to listen to the message and see how God will make a way for them. I don't know if you guys remember so now, after the um, message I preached, I, I went to my inbox on the ministry page and I said, this your scam isn't working, repent. Like normally I wouldn't respond to them, but this particular guy, it's like I really needed to respond to him. I said, this your scam isn't working, repent. And as I'm preaching right now, this person just responded. He said, I am very sorry, ma. I repent. I wasn't duped. Listen, guys. I wasn't duped. I am just looking for money for my school fees. And I thought it would be good to draw sympathy with my scam story. Aha. Uh -huh. A scammer is repenting. He said, I am sorry. I'm very sorry, ma. I repent. I wasn't duped. I'm just looking for sympathy. I'm just looking for money for my school fees. And I thought it would be good to draw sympathy with my scam story. I am never going to fabricate such again in my life. I'm really not like that. I have a good Christian upbringing. It's just the situation. I have changed, ma. It's better I walk than lie looking for sympathy. God bless you, Princess Belemzi Ministry. Love you, ma. It's my foolishness, ma. I repent. I know just by this your reply, I will testify, ma. God bless you. You see? You see what I'm saying? Because when I went to go respond to him, Saying that this your scam will not um, work. I now went um, up to see that he had actually messaged me before. You know, since August. Telling me of how depressed he is. He's looking for school, school fees. He's tried to message me several times. But this particular message, why it upset me? Because he had already messaged me on the ministry page. But he came on my live video and kept commenting it. I even deleted the comment. And then some of you were responding. But it was obvious that it was a scam. Now there are some people that they will not know. They will want to send him money. 
And I know it's not just my platform that he's done this. I know he's probably gone to several platforms because some of these people, they are the ones that use my name to scam people. They come on my video and they post all these sympathetic stuff. And people will ask them, what's your bank account number? You understand? Like, even though he has said he has repented, he's not repented. He's not, he's probably not even the real name he's using. It's just a Facebook page to see if he can get people. But these people, they're not even scared. Like, you see that somebody that's so anointed, God is using. You come on their platform with such a scam. That means you don't even have the fear of God in you. Do you understand? That means you don't even believe God lives in this person. In fact, maybe you don't even know who God is. <laughs> you don't even care if you fall down and die like Ananias and Sapphire. You see what I'm saying? So he's saying he's repented that he will never say this kind of scam story again. He will not do this again. But I don't even believe this guy. This guy is lying. This guy is not even real. This guy is fake. All of you be careful. Don't just be seeing everybody on the videos commenting that they need money. They do this and you send them money or they need this. They need that. You send them. Not all of them are telling the truth. You need to be careful. I'm just saying. You need to be careful. Don't fall for these things. They're looking for pity so you can send them money. They don't respect that you have God in you. They don't even care. They just want money. And I can tell you, in a day, they've probably scammed eight people, but they are not satisfied. They will keep doing it. Be careful. You know? This particular one, I just replied. I said, this your scam is not working. Repent. You know, because I felt like sometimes, eh, let me tell you, sometimes when God wants to save people, this could be a warning for them. And God wants to save people sometimes. This could be a warning. If they don't listen to that repent message and repent, they might get caught and go to jail. And they'll say, Chai, God warned me, oh. God told me to stop, oh. Chai, I did not listen. Or maybe they'll get killed. I'm just saying. They might just get killed. So yeah. So now he's saying he's sorry. It was a scam. He just need money for school fees. I still don't believe this man. Do you understand what I'm saying? But God is calling him to repent. Him and all his gang that they scam together with. Otherwise, very soon, <laughs> they will wish they repented. <laughs> but either way, God lives in me. Hallelujah. God lives in you. <laughs> hey, is somebody excited? <laughs> hey, my God. <laughs> Hey, God, I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, my God. Who has been blessed so far? Thank you, Jesus. Have you been blessed? My God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh. All right. I want to read um, John chapter 17. John chapter 17. John chapter 17, verse 21. Hallelujah. I was just so happy. I said, no, I need to come preach to them. And I'm sure God is the one even preaching right now. Mm. Thank you, Father. I love you so much. I feel God's presence so strong. My God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Let me read from verse 20. Jesus Christ was praying, right? He was praying for the disciples and for all believers, right? He said, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one. Just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And they, and may they be in us, so that the world will believe you sent me. Ha! As you are in me, and I am in, are in you. May they also be in us, so that the world will believe you sent me. So this is a prayer that Jesus prayed to God on our behalf. 
so that we and him and God, we can all be one together. Easy translation said, I pray that all of them, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read the easy translation. It said, I pray that all of them will become united. You, Father, I, I in me and I in, I'm in you. I pray that they also will be united in us. Then the world people will believe that you sent me. So this was a prayer that Jesus prayed. If you read the whole of John 17, it was a prayer that Jesus prayed from beginning to the end. So God, he was praying to God the way that me and you are one. I am praying that, you know, me, you, and them, we can all be together. We can all be in one. We can all be united so that the world will believe that it was God that sent Jesus. So what I'm preaching right now was a prayer that Jesus had prayed. And it's already happening. We carry Jesus inside of us. Jesus lives in us. God lives in us. So we should stop being fearful because you can't be carrying God on the inside and you are afraid. Of a small demon. When the Bible is already telling you. That greater is he that is in you. Than he that is in the world. So that power that you are afraid of. That voodoo priest that you are afraid of. That little ant that you are afraid of. Is also afraid of you. He's afraid of you. Because when he sees you. He sees Jesus. When he sees you. He sees fire. When he sees you, he sees God. He can't even look at you because you are surrounded by fire. But you, you don't know. You are running. You are hiding. You are scared. But he's like, look at this girl. He doesn't even know what she carries. <laughs> he doesn't even know the kind of power that she has inside of her. So they use fear to intimidate you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And this is all made possible because Jesus had to go to the Father. And when he left to the Father, we are now able to have the Father live in us. To have Jesus live in us. That's why he told the disciples that it's a good thing for him to go. That they shouldn't be feeling sad because he's leaving. They should actually be happy. Yes, <laughs> they should be happy. They shouldn't feel sad. <laughs> because if he doesn't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. If you read to um, John chapter 16, he said, But now I am going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you is asking where I am going. Instead, you grieve because of what I have told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I don't go away, then if I go away, then I will send him to you. So you should stop grieving because I'm leaving. In fact, it is best for you that I go to the father because the moment I go, now I can come live in you. Instead of you following me everywhere, I'm with you. No, right now, when I go, I'm coming to live in you, inside of you. I'm coming to be blended in you. <laughs> now, all of you can carry my spirit anywhere you want to go. Now, right now, it's 12 disciples with me all the time. If I go to my room, you guys cannot be in the room with me. But see, when I go... This time around, when you carry my spirit, all of you can be in your room and I'm there right there in you. <laughs> so now you don't always have to be together before you feel my presence. You don't always have to be together before you hear my voice. Hey, now you can be in your room. That one can be in the kitchen. That one can be anywhere. And all of you can still feel my presence. All of you can still hear my voice. All of you can still fellowship. But right now, you all have to gather together with me. But I'm trying to make it better in a way that I come live in you. But I need to go for this to happen. <laughs> That's why he was saying, he said that, <laughs> but now I am going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. 
Because if I don't, the advocate, the Holy Spirit will not come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. If I go away, then my spirit will be able to dwell in you. Hallelujah. So God lives in you. Jesus lives in you. There is power in you. You carry God on the inside. You are the carrier of God's presence. Stop being intimidated. Stop being afraid. Stop being shy. Stop being so fearful. Stop condemning yourself. Stop looking down on yourself. You are powerful because you are carrying God. You are carrying the presence of God. When you speak a word, believe it that it will come to pass and then so shall it be. Because how do you know God is not the one speaking that word? How do you know God is not the one singing that song? When you hear God tell you, sing this or do this, do not be afraid. Because God is in you and God will help you make sure that this thing he has told you to do will go well, will go smoothly. Do you understand what I'm saying? And stop looking for, Father, I need you to show me something. I need to see you. But why do you want to see me when you look at yourself in the mirror? You are seeing me because I'm in you. <laughs> look at yourself in the mirror. And I'm right there. That's me you are looking at. Because I'm in you. <laughs> so now that we know we have power, why don't we pray for ourselves? Why don't we speak over situations? Why don't we go out there and preach to people? Why don't we obey God? Why are we afraid to do what God has sent us to do? I'm just saying. God led us to do something. Is it really us doing it or is it God in us that's doing it? If God says go, it's because he wants you to move because you are the vessel, you are the body. Your own part is to move and he does what he does. You're not really the one doing it. If he says go, you are the physical body, go. And him, the spirit, will enable you to do what he has sent you to do. If he says post status or post this scripture on your page. You are the physical body. He needs you to use your hand and post it. But you're not the one doing the, the conviction. You're not the one making people actually read it. He's the one leading somebody to your page to read it. He's the one leading somebody to share it. He's the, but you're, all you need to do because it's your body. He needs you to get your hand, pick up your Bible copy, paste, or whatever, and post. But the, the biggest work is him that has to do it. Because he's the one that has to convince the person to read the status. He's the one that will convict their heart to feel guilty and repent and say, yes, it's me that you're talking about. Yes, he's the one that does the work. All you needed to do was to post it and let him do all the work. Sometimes we think we are the one doing the work. Like even right now, I was led to come online and share. How do you know I'm the one speaking? Like Jesus said, it's the father that's doing all the work in me. If you don't believe it's the father doing it, then believe for all the work you've seen me do. How do you think I'm doing all this work? It has to be the father. Because on my own, I can't do this thing. It has to be the power in me that is working this work. That's right. Hallelujah. So whenever God tells you to do something, don't think you are the one doing it. You are just the body that he needs to do it. But he's the one really doing it. This God told me one time, he said that he does 99% of the work. And I only do 1%. <laughs> I've told you this thing before. 
<laughs> you know how sometimes we think, even all this one, I'm thinking I'm working so hard. I'm doing all these things. Oh God, please. I'm not even the one doing all these things. When I start talking, you start feeling chills doing that. Is it me doing chills? No, that's Jesus. <laughs> that's God. When I say put your hand on your head and you start yawning, who's doing the yawning? It's not me, it's God. So I'm thinking I'm the one working so hard, but I'm not the one working so hard. It is God. Who's even giving me the strength to stay for hours? If God was not enabling me, will I be able, yesterday I preached for almost 10 hours. I came back again for almost three hours. Now I'm back again. Like seriously, it has to be God in me. So if somebody sees all these hours that I put in and I've been doing this for four years consistently, they would definitely know that this is not this woman. It can't be her. Humanly possible, humanly speaking, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So this is definitely God that is making this possible. Because on her own, Belema cannot do this. She will be tired, but she wakes up even so happy, so joyful, so jumpy, jumpy. She doesn't even look like she's been online for almost 10 hours, few hours ago. She shouted, doing, and now we thought she was going and she's back again. This has to be God in her. And that's what you call the anointing, right? Because it is God, not me. That's why we say, to God be the glory. Somebody type that. To God be the glory. Everyone, when you are doing these things, give God the glory. The moment you start to take the glory for yourself, that's where you make mistakes. The moment you think you are the one doing all this, only you doing all these things. Without acknowledging that it's God's spirit. Without acknowledging, acknowledging that it's Jesus doing it. Sweetie, you don't miss it. God does not share his glory with anyone. All the glory belongs to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. So what have you learned today? Somebody tell me what you've learned. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> hey God, I'm so happy. I don't know. I've been so happy since I woke up. I've been so, so happy since I woke up. My God. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hey. hey. I'm so thirsty. I don't know why. Like my throat is dry. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> what did you learn today? That's right. Somebody said, I cannot do without you, Lord. That's right. We cannot do without you. Somebody says, God lives in me. <laughs> See, yeah, this will change the way you think. You that is so fearful. Why is somebody that carries God's presence fearful? Do you know the presence you carry? Do you know the power that is in you? The Bible already says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So why would you be afraid of anything that is in the world? Any kind of power from the world? When you carry God's power in you, God's spirit, God's presence. Why are you afraid of that threat from that little witch? Are you serious? Why are you afraid of that threat from that voodoo priest? <laughs> you tell them, you know what? You want to kill me? No problem. Try it and see. <laughs> you touch me, you die. <laughs> because I carry power. <laughs> I carry fire. <laughs> Don't you see how this woman of God would just sit comfortably and do deliverance? Sometimes I'm chewing plantain chips because i'm not the one doing it it's not by my own power it's not by my own strength it's not by my own anything but by the spirit of the lord he's the one that's doing it so i don't know why people think you have to like fight demon box demon punch demon nah 
Hey, no be me they do this thing. It is God. So no need to be acting like. Sometimes God will tell me. He said, "Belema, I have told you. You don't need to shout. Just speak the word, and it's done. Just say the word. I've given you the power. Just say it, and it's done." Why do you keep shouting so much? I say, Father, I don't know. I just like to shout. Because sometimes when I'm just looking at these people telling me what they're going through, my eyes is changing, my face is changing. I just want to kick a demon out. Come out. You know, God says, you don't need to shout. Don't shout. <laughs> just speak the word. <laughs> don't say <see> it. <laughs> don't say it. Leave now. The way Jesus will kick out something, come out of this man. In a nice way, come out of this man. Authority. <laughs> Instead of you to say, come out, come out. God has warned me many times to stop shouting, but me, I, I, I still forget. He said, you think it's because you are shouting that they are leaving? No. You just need to say it and it's done. Like right now, let me let me try something. All of you, just relax. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes. <laughs> all of you, all of you, relax. Close your eyes. <laughs> close your eyes because some of you are still typing. I don't know how you close your eyes and you're still typing. I want to try something so you can see. And this time around, I'm not even going to speak out loud. Though. I'm just going to talk to God in my mind. And you'll see what will happen. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Thank you, Father. It is done. Some of you will sub start yawning now. Some of you will start bopping now. Some of you will run to the bathroom to pee. Some of you will start having chills. <laughs> now open your eyes. <laughs> Tell me how you feel. <laughs> I had to turn music off. Some of you is like... <sighs> <laughs> I see somebody, you're going to pee. Mm -hmm. Somebody said they are yawning already. <laughs> I didn't say anything out though. <laughs> you don't even know what I prayed for. <laughs> somebody said a big yawn. Somebody said I'm yawning. I even turned off music. Everywhere was quiet. I just prayed to God in my heart. I told God, I said, Father, cleanse them right now in the name of Jesus. I said it in my heart. Like, just cleanse them. Remove anything that is not supposed to be in them. And I just said, it is done. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you start yawning. But the prayer was in my heart. Meaning, I didn't even shout. Somebody said, I'm having tingling and I'm yawning. Somebody said, chai, I yawned, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Somebody said, yawning. <laughs> Somebody said, I'm itching in my body. <laughs> Somebody said, I'm yawning deep with tears. I'm just trying to prove to you that the power is not about my shout. <laughs> I just need to even think it <laughs> or speak it and that's it. <laughs> Somebody say I'm yawning deep with tears because some people are not understanding. What did she even say? Why are we yawning? We don't understand. It is the power of God. <laughs> oh my God. Look at that. Almost everybody is yawning deep, yawning, yawning, chills around my mouth. I'm just doing that. You see what I'm trying to explain to you? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody say a big burp. <laughs> Somebody say I'm rocking. <laughs> Somebody say I'm just coming from the bathroom. I went to pee. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, 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 hey. my God! Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> Somebody say I'm yawning, yawning, yawning. Somebody say I just pass gas. I yawn and I sense. I have a sense of peace. <laughs> ah, look at this. I didn't even pray out. You don't even know what I prayed. I just told God in my heart. I said, Father, cleanse them. 
and remove everything that is not supposed to be in them in the name of Jesus. I didn't say it out because I'm trying to tell you what God is telling me. Belema, you don't need to shout. Just say it. And now I didn't even say it out. I just prayed in my mind. And I said, okay, it is done. Some of you will just begin to yawn. And it's like, you're like, how? Before you know, the demons are leaving. Because I have already told my father what I need to be done. And my father is doing it. <laughs> Somebody said, I'm yawning uncontrollable, uncontrollably with tears in my eyes. Hallelujah. Somebody say, amen, I'm having tinglings on my body. <laughs> hey. Somebody say, I screamed. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Somebody on YouTube, Lucky, he said, is serious burping. He's burping seriously. My God. Hey. 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 Can you imagine this power? <laughs> when you carry God on the inside, my God, <laughs> you become a powerhouse. <laughs> pa, pa, power. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Somebody said, Virtu Virtue Zoe said, I have been yawning, yawning. No, I can't stop. My God. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Kerisha said, I just logged on. And you said it and I'm yawning. See, even people that just logged on the line, <laughs> they don't even know what's going on and they are yawning. And I only prayed in my mind. I did not shout. I did not say, put your hand on the head. I did not say this. Meaning, because God lives in me. God hears everything I do. Whether I say it out or I say it in my mind or whatever. But let me just say it and I'll do it. You don't need to shout. You don't need to jump. Just even think it and I will do it. Because I live in you. <laughs> I am here. <laughs> wow. Somebody say, I want to vomit and I am yawning. Wow. I command that thing to come out. Vomit it in Jesus name. <laughs> Somebody said, that got to be God. No two ways about this. Thank you, Jesus. So much power. This is not just for me only. You that is a believer, you that believe that Jesus lives in you, this can be done too. You just have to start tapping into this power that you carry, tapping into the spirit that God has put in you. You understand what I'm saying? Get to understand it more and more. Read the word of God. It strengthens you. It makes you know what you can do. Like I've read a bunch of scriptures, right? You need to read this Bible. It will excite you. And when God speaks, you will know that it corresponds with the word of God. Because when God told me, he said, why are you trying? Why do you want me to, to show you a sign or show myself? But I live in you. And that's exactly what Jesus told the disciple. Now, why do you want me to show you the father? So you mean all this while I've been here with you and you don't even know. Eh? You don't even know that I'm in the father and the father is in me. You have seen the father. When you see me, you see the father. That's right, because the Father lives in me. <laughs> oh my God. Some of you even begin to feel light right now. Somebody, you are still like something like farting. You are farting. You feel light. So this is cleansing. I just pray to God. I say, Father, cleanse them. And anything that is not supposed to be in them, remove it. But I didn't speak it out. Remember when I was preaching that message of how that servant, Abraham's servant, Went to go find a wife for his son, right? Right? And he was praying in his mind or in his heart when Rebecca showed up, right? He said he had, he had barely finished praying in his heart when suddenly he saw Rebecca coming. So I did prayer in my heart and God answered it. And you don't even know what I prayed, but you were yawning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's tap into the power that we have. Let's not just think all we have God's spirit for is to speak in tongues or just some of you are looking for God to say something to you or you're looking for God to show you something in your house or you're looking for a light to appear. But you are the light of this world. You carry the light. The light lives in you. The power lives in you. You understand? So why look for light when you are the light? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Why are you looking for light? When you are the light. Why are you looking for a sign. 
when you are the sign, you are the, <laughs> you are the one carrying God. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Let your light shine. <laughs> Be start begin to impact lives. You understand? Begin to do things. Oh my God! God told me to look at the time right now, and the time is four four four. Hey God, Father, is it that two 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 or four four four? I keep seeing these numbers, Father. I just screenshotted it. He just told me to look at the time, and it's four four four. <laughs> Four, four, four. <laughs> These numbers keep repeating. Two, 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 four, four, four. <laughs> I will see three, three, three. <laughs> hey, 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 my God. Yeah, somebody said, I am the sign. That's right. You are the sign. Uh huh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I feel so good that I was able to come on and be a blessing to somebody. But now I need to go to sleep. So I, I have to be in the studio today at um 12 because I have an appointment. I will see you guys when I get to the studio. Let me go to sleep. God bless you. I love you guys. It is well with you. Share this so that somebody can believe that God lives in them. God bless you. I love you.